Al Ibrahimi dismisses as inaccurate reports published by some newspapers about President Bashar al-Assad's role during the transitional period. The UN Secretary General stresses that Syria has respected all the deadlines set for dismantling its chemical weapons. Al-Halaqi affirms the government's readiness to ensure that every Syrian citizen has access to logistic assistance and food and medical staffs. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Mirad Okrikorian from the News Center in Damascus. The UN envoy to Syria, Lakhdar Ibrahimi, continues his visit to the country on the last leg of his tour in preparation for the International Geneva II Conference on Syria. The UN envoy to Syria, Lakhdar Ibrahimi, has described as absolutely inaccurate reports published in some Arab and foreign newspapers on President Bashar al-Assad's role during the transitional phase. Al-Ibrahimi affirmed that preparations were currently being made for Geneva II conference, which would bring together the various Syrian parties that would draw the outlines of the transitional stage and thereafter. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said that Syria has respected the 1st of November deadline to dismantle its capability to produce chemical weapons and it showed full cooperation. In a report presented to the UN Security Council, Ban Ki-moon said that the inspectors of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons have confirmed that they had destroyed the vital equipment to make the facilities inoperable at all the sites they had visited since they began their work at the beginning of October, adding that the practical destruction of Syria's production capabilities will be as expected on the 1st of November. The UN Secretary General's statement came after the Organization for Prohibition of Chemical Weapons asserted that last Thursday Syria had handed it over the initial official announcement of its chemical weapons program, affirming that there is a continuous strong cooperation with the Syrian government. The Iranian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Mardia Afkham has affirmed that her country adopts a principled stand to solve the crisis in Syria within a permanent political framework that supports the Syrian people's right to self-determination. During her weekly press conference today, Afkham referred to the UN envoy to Syria, Al-Akhdar Ibrahimi's visit to Tehran, saying the visit came to prepare the necessary ground for the Geneva II conference. She described Al Ibrahimi's meetings with Iranian officials as constructive and positive. She added that Al Ibrahimi has affirmed the need of Iran's participation in such conference, underlining the need of the participation of all concerned sides in the effort to reach a political solution in the country. In Afkham also recalled that Iran, since the beginning of the crisis in Syria, has opposed all kinds of military intervention, affirming the need of a political solution in the country. Iranian Chief of Staff Major General Hassan Fayrouz Abadi has said the American administration is committing grave mistakes and the events in Syria have proved that American calculations are incorrect. Fayrouz Abadi said the return to the logic of freedom and equality among individuals and the move within the framework of international laws and rights constitute the right road that American officials should pursue. He criticized the statements of some American officials and the way they regard their country's interests, particularly concerning the spying operations carried out by the American intelligence throughout the world. Prime Minister Dr. Wael al-Halaqi has affirmed the government's keenness to carry out the national vaccination campaign that targets 1,300,000 children on Syrian territories and to ensure the access of relief assistance to all citizens in all districts without exception. Receiving head of the Syrian Arab Red Crescent Organization, Dr. Abdul Rahman al-Attar, Dr. Al-Halaqi underlined the need of coordination between the organization and concerned international institutions and civil societies to provide 
vaccinations to all children in Syria in coordination with the Relief Supreme Committee and the Ministry of Health. Dr. Al Halaqi praised the Syrian Red Crescent's positive role in offering humanitarian assistance to the needy despite the assault against its staff by the terrorist gangs. He also stressed the government's readiness to offer logistic support, foodstuffs, and medical assistance to every Syrian citizen who needs them. Dr. Attar, on his part, thanked the government for supporting the organization, affirming that the Syrian Red Crescent has so far distributed 450,000 food baskets among citizens in the various governorates. Welcome back. The Syrian Arab army has cleared Sadat village in Homs suburb some of the territories from ter terrorists who had wreaked havoc and spread terrorism in the area. In Idlib suburbs, the Syrian Arab army has thwarted an attempt by terrorists to infiltrate into Abu Zuhur airport, killing and wounding a number of them. The army also targeted terrorists' gatherings in Haftalak, Hashhamoud, Al Rami, and Al Zahlana. In Aleppo suburbs, the Syrian Arab army has eliminated Jabhat al-Nusra terrorists in Kafar Hamra, destroying their machine guns. The army also thwarted terrorists' attempt to infiltrate in the direction of the cotton gins and the cement and seeds multiplication factories. In their resort, the Syrian Arab army continues its advance in al rushdiya neighborhood after eliminating terrorists that were held up in some buildings. The Syrian Arab army has achieved a qualitative progress in al rushdiya after repelling, in cooperation with the civil defense forces, an attempt by terrorist groups to infiltrate into the area. The operation resulted in killing many terrorists and clearing the buildings where the terrorists were found near the agricultural bank, including Burj Salalim buildings opposite to the former Faculty of Arts, Burj al-Mustafa and Burj Saeed at the towers area where the terrorists had planted explosive devices before fleeing away. After revealing the threats of terrorism, uncovering its tools and supporters, dozens of people in al Hasaka governorate joined the Syrian Arab army to participate in the task of eliminating the armed terrorist groups. The new joiners were welcomed and politically rehabilitated. They were trained to use all kinds of weapons, each according to his specialization, and they were deployed in military units. Some of those newcomers had been kidnapped and tortured by the armed terrorist groups, but they returned with more determination to fulfill their duty in defending their homeland against terrorism. The Interior Ministry of Kyrgyzstan has announced the death of one of its citizens who was fighting with terrorists in Syria. The ministry said the young man was from Kezalkia city in the province of Batkenks, south of the country, added that he had infiltrated into Syria last spring to fight there with three others from the so-called Islamic group members. The ministry pointed out that the three others were still unaccounted for. On the other hand, security sources in the country said that the campaign had started in the southern provinces early this year to recruit young men to fight on the side of terrorists in Syria. The sources added that the intelligence had arrested last September three young men in the city of Och who had just returned from Syria after taking part in combat operations there. Finally, Hezbollah Secretary General Sayyid Hassan Nasrullah asserted that an acceptable solution for the crisis in Syria is only political and the way for it is dialogue without preconditions, pointing out that all the talk about an international conference on Syria in Geneva, regardless of the conditions and details, opens a new horizon to achieve solution. In his speech yesterday, Nasrullah invited all the people in the region, which was affected by the crisis in Syria, to push for a political solution. Nasrullah said that those who hinder the political solution are well known, noting that Saudi Arabia is very much angry for what's happening in the region, and this is not a secret. It has attracted tens of thousands of fighters from all parts of the world, provided them with weapons, and financed them with 30 billion US dollars so far, in addition to the provocations it has presented in media. Nasrullah said that the anti Syria front has done its best to overthrow Syria, but it has failed.
With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business of market news with Nariman Qassam, but after a short break. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The cabinet has approved a proposal by the Jewelers' Assembly to produce Syrian golden coins. According to international standards, with a weight of 8 grams for each 21 karat golden coin, noting that the production process should be done in the licensed craft institutions. The Minister of Industry, Kamal al-Din Tome, has asserted the importance of overcoming the obstacles that face the public sector through constant training, underlining the need to improve the workers' efficiency in the public sector in order to develop the production, work mechanism and marketing processes. The weekly trading value of Damascus Securities Exchange has increased reaching about 6.6 .6 million Syrian pounds distributed on 53 deals with a total bulk of 45,000 shares. The leading companies ranked first as the total trading value in the International Bank for Trade and Finance has reached 2.6 million Syrian pounds distributed on 11 deals, closing at 183 Syrian pounds a share. Bank crude fell from the highest level in a week before U.S. government data forecast to show crude inventories have risen to their highest level in four months. Futures dropped 0.5 percent, declining for the first time in four days. Bank for December settlement was down 71 cents to reach more than 108 U.S. dollars a barrel. U.S. stocks rose, leaving the Standard & Poor's 500 index poised for the best annual gain since 2003. European stocks also rose as the Federal Reserve began a two-day meeting. Gold today gained for the fourth consecutive session, edging closer to a five-week high. As weak U.S. economic data boosted expectations for the Federal Reserve to maintain its stimulus measures, brush, burnishing sorry, the metal's appeal as an inflation hedge, gold for delivery in December was little changed to reach 1,353 U.S. dollars an ounce. The yen strengthened for the first time in four days against the euro as improving jobs and retail sales in Japan diminished the case for more stimulus by the central bank which meets this week. On the other hand, Japan's currency rose versus all of its 16 major counterparts. Ladies and gentlemen, this was our economic news for today. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.